So you're painting with gouache and you don't know which brush to use. This video is for you. There are so many brushes out there. I want to help you and give you my three and a half favorite brushes, plus a bonus brush. Bonjour, I'm Cécile, a French artist, and my mission is to help you becoming a better artist. I've tried so many brushes, you have no idea. I have a huge collection of it, but in the end, I'm always using the same brushes. Let me show you my favorite brushes and how to use them with gouache. So many brushes, so much choice, and you might be overwhelmed by the amount of brushes there is out there. And regarding brushes for gouache, I have a top three, so to speak, because I have all this, but believe me, I'm always using the three same brushes, or should I say three and a half? Let me explain. I want first to talk about the anatomy of a brush. First thing is the handle. Regarding brush, it will be short handles that are made for painting while you are sitting versus painting when you are standing with long handles. And the handle is usually wood with a varnish, a paint and a varnish. Regarding the size of the brush, it's written somewhere on the handle, but the problem is there is no standard. So it can be really, really confusing. For example, this is a 12 and this is a 12, but I don't know if there is something to understand around here. The number is really depending on the brand. So once you have a brand you love, you'd better stick to it and know your brand very well. Also, the name of the brand may disappear when you use it a lot, like here and happily they have a color so I can take it back and know it's a wingo but I don't have the size anymore so if you are really loving a brush and you want to use it again you better write it down. Next part is the ferrule which is metallic it can be golden silver or blue and you have the crimp here which is the part where the ferrule is secured to the handle and when you are buying a brush, you want to test this if it's really secure. And to make your brush last longer, don't let this part sit in water because the water will go inside the ferrule and you will lose the handle or it can move and it's really not convenient to work with it. And then you have the head of the brush with the tip and the belly. And the belly is the largest part. This is where the water is sitting, including the paint as well. For gouache, you really don't need to have very large bellies like you would for watercolor. And the head is made with hair, and hair can be synthetic or it can be an animal. I prefer to use synthetic brushes. The head can bend more or less, depending on how hard are the bristles. And you have some brushes that are really stiff. Like this one is really hard, really strong, and it's called Forte Synthetics. So this is why it's convenient for gouache because you have a really good grip with the brush. My favorite brush for gouache is a synthetic flat brush with a soft bending and a not so large tip. Those brushes come in a really huge variety of sizes from very big to very small. It's really up to you and also up to your budget. The bigger they are, the more expensive they are. This is really my go-to brush. I'm used to paint with a flat brush and this is quite different than painting with a round brush. You can cover large areas. Really, you can go very large. And if you use it quite dry, you can make nice textures. You can also make some nice trees. You can also make some nice grass. But you can also use the edge of the brush and make fine lines. You can go small with width. 
And if you take a smaller one, you will get finer details. If this video is helpful, please book the like button. It really helps the channel. Thanks a lot. Merci. My second favorite brush is a round brush with a fine tip and a small belly, so to speak. It's a thin one and you can do a lot of things with it. Let me show you. A good quality round brush is important. If you have something that is very cheap, you will have a point that is not so sharp, not so pointy, so to speak. So with this, you can do very fine lines. You can press hard. And this is holding a lot of paint. You can go really a long way with what you have on your brush. And as well, you can make nice textures, maybe give more details to the grass. You can use just the tip of the brush. My third favorite brush is this really fine brush. It's a size zero and you can do very, very small details with it. But you have a very short hair, so it doesn't handle a lot of paint inside. This is why I like to use as my half, my three and a half favorite brush, this liner, which is basically a round brush, but very slim, with very few hair and very long hair. And this is handling much paint than this one, but they are doing quite the same thing. So let's say it's one and a half brush together. And for the small one, you need to use a consistency that is a bit more diluted for the fine details. And I will send you back to my video where I explain the right consistency for gouache with do's and don'ts. I have diluted a bit my paint. I can do now very, very small details or larger one. You can still use your brush by pressing. This is perfect for eyelashes, fine branches, nice grass. Depends if you pull, if you push. And the liner is, I would say, more liquid. It requires more liquid. You can go a long way with what you have on your brush. And if you don't have enough, I have another one just for you. This is a bonus brush. This one is an angled brush. It's like a flat brush, but with a very sharp tip here. Very cool to make leaves and flowers because you can press and get a leaf shape, which is great. And if you want to see how I use it, I have a video where I made flowers with just this brush. And still you can use it like a flat brush. Once you master the angle, because at the beginning it can be a bit tricky. And you can also use it with a large tip on top and get some nice shapes. But it's really optional. You don't need to have this brush with you to begin gouache. For, um, I would say that if you have those three, you are good to go. I'm not giving you any brand recommendation because it's so different from a country to another. And believe me, sometimes very cheap brushes are really cool. Except for the round brush, if you really want a fine tip, you need to get something a bit more pricey. And now you can watch this video that YouTube thinks is good for you.